Right, so hey, what's up? Welcome to, I think it's the fourth episode already, right, Max? Indeed. It's the fourth episode of the Too Much Monte podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the playoffs and our predictions, uh, the excellent interviews of the Mavericks, the fact that Brunson, Luca, and Jackson are not playing in Summer League, or Jackson might not be, the Dwight Powell extension, the fact that they're not going after uh, premier free agents, the lottery odds and the tiebreaker stuff, Dirk retiring, and that there might be new uniforms for the Mavericks. So what do you want to start with, Max? I feel like we should start with the hot news, which is this lottery tiebreaker situation. Yeah, for sure. Also because it's the fastest. So how we're going to run this is first we're going to explain what happened, but then we got to do this tankathon sim So until yeah. the Mavs get a pick. So. Sure. Um. Essentially, what happened was the Mavericks, quote-unquote, if you want to be technical, they lost the tiebreaker according to how the technical jargon would work. But in reality, it doesn't actually matter what the result of the tiebreaker was because the difference between winning and losing is literally just one extra lottery combination out of like a thousand, if even. I think it's more than a thousand. But I think it might be 10,000 or something like that. I don't know. But regardless, it's not a huge difference. And in exchange for moving down, quote-unquote, even though not really, because they have the same top four odds, basically, um, they have a higher second-round pick as a result of the tiebreaker. Unless they move into the top four, then it'll move back down, which is fine, because then you have a top four pick, so who cares? And um, in addition, you're giving the Hawks a worse pick. Um, That's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, Dennis, what are your reactions, I guess, to the whole situation? Yeah, I agree with most of that. It's, it's, at first I was like uh, upset because I didn't know too much about it, but then I read some stuff about the fact that it's mostly better for the Mavs. And that, yeah, the, our second round pick got better. And yeah, it's, overall it's, it's, it's a lot better than expected. So that's good, I suppose. I mean, there's still not a lot of chance that the Mavs keep their pick, but it's still like 30 to 40%, something like that, right? <laughs> Um, I think it's might be a little lower than 30%, but I can check the pick odds. But Grizzlies fans and Mavs fans are salty at each other right now because <laughs> Grizzlies fans are mad they're in the 8 slot. They want to be 9 so they can convey. And all what? they had to do was beat the Mavs, and then they would be fine. Wait, why did they want to convey? Why do they because, not want to keep the break? Because um, next year's class is going to be pretty much just as good as this year for like the mid-lottery. And um, the Grizzlies are rebuilding, whereas the Mavericks, you know, if they convey this year, they're going to get a significantly worse pick next year. That is true, but I do think that the Ma- the, the, no, the Grizzlies with Valanciunas have been really good. And I think if Jackson is healthy alongside Valanciunas and a top eight pick, I think that us honestly would, would make them, I, I guess, maybe not playoffs right away, but they, they would at least get like the ninth or tenth seed. You know, next year. Yeah, I think it's worth noting the Grizzlies front office upheaval. That, in case you haven't seen it of late, they fired like their GM and stuff, and they're rehiring. Yeah. With that information established, I think it's pretty safe to say someone's going to be on the move in Grizzlies town. Likely Mike Conley. I think so too. Yeah, and they might get a pick for him. You know. Yeah, they're just they're looking to acquire long term assets right now, which is what they should have done a while ago. Oh my gosh, it is hailing out here. Wow. <laughs> no, but like yeah, I I get what you're saying. Like the the Grizzlies want to keep tanking next year, so they need their pick for next year too, right? Yeah. So they're just trying to get they're just trying to pay the debt now instead of later. Right. Holy shit! That that hail that hail is really loud. Yeah, that's what <laughs> that's happens when funny. you have we have a skylight, so it's hitting our the glass on it, but it's like triple pane, freaking bulletproof, basically. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of forgot what, what we were saying, but yeah, um, we were talking about the Grizzlies conveying. Right. Yeah. So yeah, 
in, on one hand, I can understand why the Grizzlies, you know, the fans, why they want to convey. But at the same time, a top eight pick, it wouldn't be that bad. Well, they're going to oh. get a top eight pick next year, too. They're just trying to get it off now instead of later. Yeah. And next next year's draft is supposed to be better. So I, I guess I understand. Yeah. But it's then at the same time, why were the Grizzlies tanking so hard, you know, then? Because, well... They weren't really. They were sort of tanking, right? They had nights where they would play Mike Conley like 35 minutes. Right, but at the same time, they they like shut down Valanciunas what and Jackson. Tr- they were what they were trying to do, if I would guess, is they were trying to position hard for the ninth slot. Right. They wanted to have that nine slot because that would benefit them significantly because it would give them the best odds at top four while giving them the best chance to convey their pick at the same time. So it would be like a best-of-both-worlds situation. Right. Yeah. So good news, the hail has apparently stopped. So Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of short. Well, it's but still it's... raining. It's just it's not hail anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. So, you were talking about earlier that the, I mean, before we, we were recording, but that Mark Cuban said, I, I missed that interview, I sh- I'm going to listen to that later, but, like, Mark Cuban said that they're no, not really hunting, like, premier free agents, and we kind of had a discussion about that. I thought that meant that maybe Fujific and Kemba would also be included in that list, but you mentioned to me how... Um, Mostly just Kevin Durant is a premier free agent, and Vucevic and Kemba are more just stars rather than superstars, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it's the well, there's more than one. It's not just KD. You have Kawhi Leonard in here, too. Right, yeah. But I don't think the Mavs have any chance at Kawhi Leonard, and if they did, it would be kind of remarkable, really. Yeah. Um, and you have Kyrie Irving. I doubt the Mavs get Kyrie Irving either, and I'm not sure they even really want Kyrie Irving at this point. Yeah, I agree. The only one they might want is Kevin Durant, but at the same time, I can understand that they don't want to uh, risk not getting him, plus also not getting someone else. You know, I think if they're get if they're going gonna go right at just just right away at like Fujifilm or Kemba or something, they're probably gonna get them. You know, either either one of them. You know. Well, I guess the question is, how much do you have to pay Vucevic, and how much do you have to pay Kemba? Because Kemba yeah. wants his money. There's no doubt. Kemba wants his money. Yeah, for sure. I think either way you have to max either of them, I think. And I don't think the Mavs want to do that based on their philosophy, which is they're saying they want to they want to acquire multiple pieces rather than just pay one a lot of money unless it's a premier talent. Right. I think you can get Fucevic at a lower cost. But how much is a lower cost? $18 million? What what's the max uh, nowadays? Like how much for money? Vooch, is that? For yeah. Vooch, it would be like the max the Mavs could offer. I think would be like twenty six. That's for one year or not? No, right? Twenty six per twenty six per for like four years. Oh, wow, yeah. So I guess maybe yeah, eighteen twenty. That will be decent. I think that'd be something, but you're not going to be able to acquire too much with that other eight million. You might right. get like one quality rotation player, right? Because players that are left in this market are going to get their money this time I mean, around. in my opinion, I get what, is, what they're saying, but, like, in my opinion, getting Fujifilm is, is is enough, you know, because we also got Brunson, we got Luka, and Kristaps. It would you know, be what, enough what if the need, Mavericks you know? had defenders, but they really don't have defenders. They need defenders. And That's Vucevic, shooters as well. regardless of the stats... Once the playoffs come around, Vucevic is going to have problems defensively, and that's just a fact. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like Nurkic, right? Like, right. Same thing. Nurkic can really show out in the regular season defensively because he has the size. He's not the slowest of feet. He's still kind of slow, but he's big enough. But once the playoffs come around, there's the players are too mobile. They're too smart. They're, the game plan is too effective. Right, right. Um, is Vucevic a better perimeter defender than Kristaps is? Do you know that? No, I would not say so. So, basically, like, yeah, at least one of them has to be, like, a bad perimeter defender, so that, that would be pretty bad, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm... Honestly, I kind of just want to see if the Mavericks can keep their pick, because then they should get... If they can get one Zion, otherwise they should really need to look at acquiring Brendan Clark one way or another. Brendan Clark does sound really good, but I'm kind of questioning whether he can help right away as much as... Oh, like, he someone... absolutely can. Really? Yes. As, as much as like someone like Vucevic can? Not in a... Well, it's not going to be in the same way, but you could argue... Because Vucevic most effective when he has the ball in his hands. Yeah. It's really hard for... I mean, outside of the shot, Vucevic is having a really hard time really having an impact on the game. It's kind of like Boogie. But the difference is Boogie is like legitimately <laughs> mobile compared yeah. to Vucevic. Like he can actually handle the ball from the perimeter and drive and score versus wings. Because right. you can just get ahead of steam going. You, you don't really see that with Vucevic much. Um... And I think the, the big thing with Clark is the Mavericks need a Dwight Powell on offense that can contribute defensively better, like significantly better. Uh, honestly, and, like combining Powell and, and Maxi would be perfect. So but like you could like start Dwight with like 20 minutes and then have Maxi come off the bench also with like 20 minutes. Yeah, that, but it's not that, the same as having one player who can do exactly. both of those things. Oh, you're right. Yeah, and that's what Clark is. And in addition, he can handle the ball like a like a wing, if not a guard. Right. And um, he has the best touch floater game I've ever seen for a roll dive man. Like he can legitimately put the ball on the floor, float it up there over the defense, and get it to go. Oh, well, that's really the, nice. It's beautiful I, to watch. That that reminds me of when they had Sam Dallenbear and Dejuan Blair, and they both but like the put a is, lot of floaters up. Those dudes are like way bigger and not quite so mobile compared to Clark. Clark is one of the most athletic players in this class. All right, I thought he was less athletic than basically well, like Dwight Powell or something, but Dwight well Dwight Powell is explosive, but he's not as fast as Clark. Clark I would give the agility okay. to, whereas Dwight Powell is probably more explosive just because he's bigger. If you were to take straight up like vertical numbers, it'd probably be pretty similar. But obviously, Powell's taller and has a longer wingspan. I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah. So then I kind of wonder, like, why is he like projected to be like eighth or something, and not like in the top four in this week draft? Age. Age. How old is he? Twenty three. Oh, that's actually like perfect for the Mavs. You know, they're not looking for someone too young. Well, yeah. The big thing is. People underestimate two things. Is the they're kind of worried about the size, which in my how, how opinion, how tall is he again? Six eight or so with like a six ten wingspan. Okay. I mean, next to next to Kristaps, that probably works because Kristaps I mean, is defending bigs. You know, if, I think if look at what the Warriors can do with Draymond Green, I think yeah. As if you have the game, if you have the requisite abilities, at a certain point size doesn't matter if you have other players that can make up for it. the Mavericks have freaking Chris Stats Porzingis yeah um, so I mean you put um Chris Stapps at the four on offense and the five on defense and Clark the four on defense and the five on offense you have one of the best tandems like you basically have um Kenyon Martin next to Dirk basically, but with more offensive game for Kenyon Martin, and he can actually defend, like, perimeter players. Like, you can legitimately ask Brandon Clark to guard a steady diet of, like, average wing forwards in the NBA, but you don't want him matching up against, like, Paul George or anything, of course. Yeah. Well, I, I, I agree with that, you know, with the four and five uh, positioning you said, but, and uh, honestly, you're getting me really excited about Brandon Clark, and I really hope like the Mavs keep their picks so they can trade for him. They could probably land him without keeping their pick because he could legitimately fall to like the late, like late lottery, like ten or so. And if the Mavericks use some trade bait, um, like uh, perhaps um, using their trade exception and acquiring like a guy that's somewhat overpaid. But still a decent player, and the tenth, like like let's say the eighth pick or whatever, they could probably make that happen. Um, but it depends on their priorities, really. Yeah. So you want to run this tankathon sim really quick? Um, first simulation, 
the Hawks win the lottery going up to first. The Mavericks um, go up to the third slot. Wow. Right away at the first sim? First sim. Wow. Um, so obviously the Hawks get Zion. Knicks are at two and they pick RJ. The Mavericks are third. And th- in this mock draft, they select Jarrett Culver. Which, in terms of a straight-up mock draft, I would probably approve of. Yeah, me too, I think. I mean, I don't know too much, but like that's the precision they need and stuff. Culver is going to be the ideal wing next to Luka, especially once he gets his shooting figured out. Yeah. But in the meantime, he's going to be an ideal perimeter defender that the Mavericks have been wanting that can actually produce offensively night to night. Yeah. Um, the Clark in this mock draft by Tankathon is going six, which is a little higher than he used to be going. So, which is fair because his stock definitely should go up. The fact that Cam Reddish is still a top five mock, which is still like theoretically possible, and that's the saddest part, is like insane to me. Yeah. But um, Wait, yeah, which the team is the the one that has as him as sixth? The Clark. Yeah. Oh, um, the Suns are mocked to pick him. Yeah, so you think sim. maybe the Mavs could like uh, uh, pick uh, Ja Morant and then trade with his sons, right? Probably. I I mean I guess, but you gotta make sure that's prearranged. Yeah, of sure. Of course, there should yeah. be no situation for where Ja Morant ends up on a Mavs roster. No, same with Trey Young. You know, last year. Well, that was different. That I could have even understood keeping Trey Young if it meant trading Dennis. I guess so. Yeah. Because I think the the big thing was how willing is Tr- is Rick to bend the knee for Trey Young. That's right. the big thing. Yeah. Which, that would be concerning. But I think the Mavericks got the best situation they could have got for themselves out of the deal. Especially since they still gave themselves just as much of a chance as Zion as anybody else. So. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, also... So, um, going back to the second round pick, because that's affected. So, since the Mavericks lost or whatever, they have the 37th pick of the second round unless they move up. And in this particular mock draft, they're selecting Luka Samanich. I would not be a fan of that, really. Um, Looking at the players available in this mock draft, at that pick or later. Um, some players that come to mind, I'd probably prefer, um, honestly, I'd probably prefer Carson Edwards to Samanich. Um, I'd really prefer Yavel Zeusman out of uh, Maccabi. Uh, I would, wouldn't mind taking a shot if um, Killian Tilly can actually prove that he still has game after his injury, which I think he does, but you have to prove that. Um, Jalen McDaniels would be an interesting bet. Um, also, I wouldn't even mind to look at Iggy Rezdakis, even though I'm not exactly the biggest fan of him either. The Mavericks, the weird thing is, like, the good players that you really, really want to second round all go, like, right before the Mavs are picking. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah. And that leaves, like, you have some decent scraps, but it's not the same, like... You have Chuma OKK, one of the most underrated players in this draft, mocked at 33. You have Davidas Servitas, one of the youngest players in this draft, who is already an elite shooter off the off the screen and off the catch. And he's six foot eight or six foot nine and only 19 years old, playing in the Lithuanian league night to night and in the Euro Cup, I believe as well. So. Mm. Yeah, and then you have Ty Jerome going 32nd, one of the best touch field players in this draft despite his lack of uh, positional size as a two guard because he, even though he's a great playmaker, he can't really create his own uh, space. He has to... It's really hard for him to do that. But he's, he's, the field is so good, sometimes he's able to overcome that, which is kind of remarkable. Right. Um, you got any, anything else about the lottery, or you want to move on? I don't think there's anything else to bring up outside of the fact that somebody, the Mavericks, need to make a lot of trade calls on draft night if they keep their pick, unless it's number one. There should be yeah. no trade, 
None. There's not a single trade that anybody can offer for the number one pick. Not Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and a and a bunch of picks. I don't care. No. Yeah, not even not even Anthony Davis either, in my opinion. You get like one year of Anthony Davis and then he leaves. Yeah, that as well. That's true, yeah. Or if you view Giannis, you get two years of Giannis and he might leave you. That too, yeah. And the Bucks aren't gonna do that either. But No, yeah, for sure. Uh so Mark Cuban said that and I I don't know if that means that it's actually true or that they're planning on it, but yeah, no, I mean it's, it's probably likely like ninety percent, but he wants to extend Dwight Powell to three years, right? Yes. And when Mark Cuban says he wants to do something and it's related to players on his own roster, usually it gets done. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. Unless like something like Kevin Durant suddenly says, "Yo, I want to sign here. Give me the the give me the max amount of money," and they'll be like, "Okay, Dwight, you can go." Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I I like that they're saying that now because that's out of the way mostly, you know. And uh, I I think Dwight deserves it from how he's been playing lately, you know. And I think he he proved that he's probably better than Maxi Kleber, which is weird to, weird to say because Kleber has been like better than him for the last two years. But he's playing think, so well lately. Yeah, I think th- Powell is a significantly better fit with Luca than Maxi is. I agree with that. Yeah, but Maxi can have a more impact on the game defensively, which the Mavericks desperately need. Yeah, for sure. By the way, it is worth noting that technically Rick didn't mention that Maxi and Dorian would be back next summer. I mean, next year, but yeah, he technically can't, but I mean, he did mention JJ was going to be back, so that's great. Hmm. Not really. It's not really that great, actually. No. I mean... Because I I found the Mavericks. I want roster space right now. Yeah. It's tough because it is JJ, but like, he's injured for most of the year. Yeah, he's not even going to be back from his Achilles injury. It's like, what, a 12-month recovery? Isn't that how long yeah. it is? Yeah, it's not gonna even be back till like the All Star break, like. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, if they sign someone like Vucevic, then it's a cool idea to have Maxi and Dwight both come off the bench and play together. I think that that works. Yeah, Maxi decently. and Dwight are best when they play together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't really work in starting units. Best in like a bench position sure. to yeah. for to gain momentum yeah so but i can if, like yeah. imagine like Kristaps and brendan clark like playing together and then Kristaps defending fives and then off the bench the same thing basically like maxi playing the four offensively but defending yeah. fives yeah brendan clark can basically be the free safety of our entire defense yeah and it would be remarkable it'd be kind of almost like bringing back sean marion in that kind of way yeah. Except he's not so long, but I would argue he's significantly more athletic than the Mavs Sean Marion. Right, yeah. But like, um, so yeah, like Maxi like, and uh, and Dwight, you know, they yeah. do the same thing basically. If, they, if yeah. they're both coming off the bench, then Maxi yes. is defending fives, but playing Obviously, four Obviously there's more offensive limitations, but that's okay. Yeah. Um. Also... Big fan of Max Power right now. So Max Power is like the Bibbs came up with it. It's what he calls the Maxi and Powell duo because they're so effective. Yeah, I like them together the most. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I also like Maxi and Dorian, but Dorian seems to have fallen off a cliff. So, but yeah, whenever that's... they were good together, they were the SWAT team. Yeah, that's weird. Dorian has really been falling off. Yeah. Okay, let's let's bring this out, right? Yeah. Do do you want the Mavericks to re-sign Dorian? And if so, what is your dollar amount before you say no? Uh, that's such a such a tough question because like, if you have him how he was like at the end of last year or the beginning of this year or something, like at his best he's really good, but at his worst he's pretty bad, I think. But I I I think for like. Slightly more than a minimum is pretty decent if he's okay with that. No, what's your number before you say I'm not willing to resign you? So, like, what's the minimum for him? Like one million? What's, I what think. What is your yeah? Well, the million it would be like one and a half. But what's your maximum right. you're willing to pay him? 
I think two and a half million per year. No, that. you should be able to pay more than that. That's the vet man. Like. Yeah, but does he really deserve more money? Like. Yes, he deserves probably four or five the most. Really? Oh, I think that's that's probably doable. You know, I think. Um, no, I think someone's gonna offer him a bigger contract because they wanna. They're just desperate for young talent, like the mm. Cavaliers or something. Mm, that that is true. Yeah. Is he restricted? Yes. So that Ooh, means that the Mavericks bad. would have yeah. to match. Well, it's not necessarily bad. It's just a mixed bag. Right. Yeah, the I think thing is the Mavericks would have to match any offer. Right. I but think they they have the right to. So like, it, they are they have all the power, but at the same time they can kind of get screwed. Yeah, I think not more than eight million, maybe. Maybe I'm ten. Not, I'm not paying that man eight million dollars. No. I think most likely we'll lose them then if you're saying like the Cavs are desperate and stuff. Well, they might be. They probably are because they don't really have much defense on their roster right now. Outside of if you think Larry Nance is a good defender, no. So, yeah, the, someone's gonna poach him for more money than I'm willing to pay him. That's fine. Cause, yeah, I, th- I think most likely he's gone then. Yeah, I'd I'd rather have the cap space and the roster space than trying to pay Dorian like close to ten million dollars. Yeah, which is actually really possible despite his cold streak. So. But if the Mavericks can keep him for cheap, then he's better to have than not have. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'd love to have him back for the right money. Yeah. Whereas and, Maxi, I'm willing to pay like the ten million. Like I'd actually be willing to do that. Yeah, me too, for sure. He, he's a lot better than Dorian, in my opinion. He's a lot more consistent. Yeah. Whereas Dorian, if he's not hitting shots, it's really hard for him to have any sort of offensive impact. Yeah, for sure. Outside of the glass, he's really excellent at crashing the glass. So we'll say that. Yeah, I I I am gonna miss that if he's gone. But at the same time, maybe like someone like Brendan Clark is probably really good at that. Clark's decent at that. It's not his best trait, but he's pretty decent at it. He gets a, he grabs eleven boards a game right now, um, per thirty six. Wow, that's a lot. Wow, it's a lot for his size. He yeah. also plays in the West Coast Conference, but I mean, he did play versus like Duke and. Um, a bunch of other top uh, Tennessee and all those programs. Um, have you? I showed you the block, right? The Brandon Clark Tennessee block. I don't think so. You look it up. Just look it up. Okay. But, and then um, we want to go in and move on. Unless you have another free agency thing you want to mention about anything in particular, because I think we went over it all. Yeah, we went over it all. So um, exit anyway, interviews. I was, Yes, exit interviews. The only thing of note I really saw was Powell was like the same same thing about how he wants to be back. Um, right. Nothing else really came of note in particular. Yeah, I haven't seen the 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 JJ one, the Brunson one, and the Dwight one. So well, maybe I mean, you could none like of those, sum, sum that up the, for me. The Brunson one doesn't really matter. He's not going anywhere. So right. Yeah. The JJ one, he was basically like, oh, I plan on being back here next year, which, of course, he's going to say that. And then Powell's like, I I want to be back next year, one right. way or another. Right. And he would kept getting backed into a corner by report trying to say, are you going to pick up your option? And Powell's like, I don't know if I'm going to pick up my option. I'm not my agent. Yeah. I don't sure. handle my contract information every day. That's my agent's. That's my agent's job. <laughs> he didn't say that, but like it's kind of implied because that's how the business actually works. And asking yeah. players those sorts of questions is really mean. It kind of is, yeah. Uh, Rick was talking about that Jaron Jackson might not play. Probably not. He said in the summer league. Sorry, you're gonna have to say that name again because you just said Jaron Jackson. Oh, sorry, I meant Justin Jackson. Wow. Uh, oh, by the way. Quick question. Yeah. Justin Jackson or Dorian Finney-Smith? And I'll tell you who I'll take, but Justin Jackson or Dorian? Uh, because Dorian has been struggling right now, I would probably say Justin Jackson. But generally, Dorian or Justin Jackson, with everything you've seen from Dorian and everything we've seen from Justin? The thing is that I haven't seen too much about Justin Jackson to really you've know. Seen, you've seen enough. You've pretty much seen his whole game here. Okay. I mean, he's a, he's a great shooter, and that's he's something. Great, he is not a great shooter. He's not lately. He's no. been shooting really well. He's been shooting like about league average his whole career. Okay. And he's really inconsistent. Yeah, that's true. His shot is really quick, and he can shoot contested shots pretty. It's not decently. exactly 
yeah, he's not pretty, though, is that for sure. <laughs> um, the big thing with Jux- Justin Jackson is he has so much offensive versatility for a player who's so raw. <laughs> Yeah, like his ability to, to drive into the lane and get off tough finishes, crafty finishes with touch, is really impressive. Yeah, but that's like that's pretty much his only trick he can use every single night. Like hmm. you see, so many nights where Justin Jackson suits like six of eight from two, and you're like, what? <laughs> but the big yeah. thing with Justin Jackson is defensively, he's so much lacking compared to Dorian, hmm. and he doesn't really crash the glass like that either. Yeah, so then I guess Dorian is most likely the better pick, but I just he's wish also, he was more consistent. He's also well, they're both inconsistent, but they're, Justin Jackson is also like two or three years younger. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I think Dorian's like twenty five or so. Let me check. He Dorian, might even be older. He might be twenty six. Um, he yeah. turns twenty six in May. Okay. Yeah, mm. he's also only been in the NBA for like two to three years, right? Jackson's been in the league for two years. And Dorian Finney-Smith for three? Yes. Yeah. So like their potential is pretty much similar, I guess. I don't know. I would argue Jackson has greater potential, but it seems very difficult to realize. Yeah, I feel that way as well. Whereas yeah. Dorian... You know what you're going to get, and whenever he's able to sh- hit his shots, he can provide a lot of value as a two-way player. Yeah. I think I'm going to pick Dorian over Justin Jackson, but at the same time... Wait, they're both restricted, right, this year? Justin Jackson has two or three years left on his contract. He's not going anywhere unless he gets traded. Right. So that makes the decision a lot easier because Jackson will still be here, you know, unless well, they trade him. The well, what the thing the thing would be is like if you had to choose because you're running out of roster space and play someone wants Justin Jackson they'll give you like like a, a couple second round picks or something. Yeah, I'd be fine with that, and then keep Dorian. Yeah, I prefer that. I think so. Yeah, and Justin Jackson's getting paid like four million. Let me check that. Let me check his contract really quick. Sure. Um Contract. Um, next season he gets paid three point two million. Okay, that's that's not too bad considering Dorian might earn a lot more this off season. And then the next season he has a five point two, uh, sorry, not five point two, five million dollar uh, team option. Right. And then the year after that is his restricted free agency year. Right. So you're, if you want to keep Jackson, you're probably going to keep him for like five or more years. You're keeping him for at least the next two years. Yeah. But like, but like he's restricted yeah, in but free agency. So if you want to keep him, depends on keep the him contract. For a long time. Yeah, it depends yeah. on the contract because he right. might get overpaid. Right. The same way he got overdrafted, to be honest. But that's another story. <laughs> So, yeah, Brunson and Luca are not playing, and that kind of sucks, league. honestly. In the, yeah, in the summer league, league. Yeah. 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 Or, and apparently, Jackson might not be either. Exactly, yeah. Rick Rick said so. But, I mean, you know, if the Mavericks get Zion, I think they're going to want Luca to be there, make that chemistry get going. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. And also, if if someone like Brendan Clark falls to the Mavs, then I think they Brunson probably want to do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, they can. Brunson can take care of Clark pretty well. Yeah, I think so. I think the uh, the main thing with Zion is just like you need to their superstar chemistry that you need to get that going right away. Yeah, true. Even though Zion's probably one of the nicest people I've ever seen in the NBA draft, that is so good. He's such a great person already, and it's kind of remarkable. <laughs> I I haven't seen too much about him. Personality wise, but he he seems very friendly and 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 humble. Yeah, he and like I love like that. interviews. He's constantly talking about how he cares more about the highlights of his teammates than himself. Oh, that's perfect. There aren't many like nineteen year olds who are like that. Like if you compare it to DeAndre Ayton from next year, he was constantly talking about himself and how he wants to be great and stuff. Same thing with R.J. Barrett. Yeah, and Zion sounds perfect. Like really humble and stuff. 
but in addition to that, he hasn't like it's not the same as other players who like have been coached up in college for multiple years. And also Zion's like clearly the best player on on what was Duke's team this year, whereas some of these other players are like kind of being underutilized and like kind of more humbled by that. Whereas Zion gets all these great things and he's still so humble. It's like he doesn't get an ego from it. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. I would love him on the map so much, you know. Oh my god, yeah. the pick and pop with Zion cutting to the rim. Who Oof. guards that? How do you guard yeah. Luca can step back on you, Chris Daps is available, and Zion's cutting into the rim <laughs> so Luca can pass to him, so you don't know whenever he's going up if he's gonna hit Zion on the cut or if he's gonna actually shoot or if he's gonna hit Chris Daps for three. Like, what are you gonna do? It's impossible. It's so beautiful. Yeah. You, you can't do anything about it. Also, yeah. that defense would be just monstrous. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's so much athleticism, so much... Just, so... Yeah. Oh, sorry, continue. Yeah. So much shot-blocking ability, so much potential that is yeah. already... It's so beautiful. I can't even, like... I'm not kidding you, the Mavericks, as long as... Health for health willing... And the Mavericks land Zion, they will become the next dynasty of the league. Yeah, I think so too. Like, the the funny thing as well is if I, I look at other teams, and I don't think Zion really fits with them. Like, with the Hawks next to John Collins, oh, he, they, I don't think would, that works. He would fit. The big problem is that he would have to carry a defensive load, which would reduce his effectiveness. Yeah. I, I think that's it, yeah. And, like, Whereas, on, on the least, Knicks, yeah. it, it's just, just not enough, enough talent. And... On the Suns, he has to play next to DeAndre Ayton, which is weird. Yeah, the bigger yeah. problem with the Suns is they don't have a point guard if they draft Zion. So basically, Zion is going to be their point guard. I think like he's going to no, handle Booker. Ball will, Booker will still be the point guard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's how Kokoshkov wants it. So, which is fine. The, yeah. They so. need to get a real point guard if they ever want to actually win games. So I think they're going to going to go after John Moran because of that. If they John can't have Morant, Zion. If they get John Morant, they're not going to win games either. He's going to take a while. For sure, but I think the Suns are okay with that, probably. Well, they might be okay with that, but their fans might not be, because they've been yeah. a seller for so many years already. True. They should just, like, sign a veteran point guard, probably, like the Magic are doing, you know, with this... Uh, well, uh, they, what's his name again? Sign? Uh, the Magic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. DJ Augustine. DJ Augustine, yeah, yeah. They They've had DJ like Augustine him, yeah. for forever. True. But the big problem with the Magic is nobody really wants to. I mean, the Suns. No one wants to go to the Suns because their front office is just an absolute dumpster fire. Yeah, for sure. I, they should fire the their front office. Oh, they did, and then they hired the same front office. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. True. They they fired McDonough and then they just hired their interim GM James Jones who has like little to no experience. Right. And like and like even being an executive even like he's only been out of the league for like four years five years. Right. Yeah. Like that's too soon. Like yeah, imagine sure. if you gave Sean Marion the GM position for the Mavericks to be like what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's pretty bad. And I love Sean Marion a lot. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um. So, you were talking about I, I I haven't seen it anywhere, but like you were talking about the fact that there's rumors. There are rumors that the Mavs are gonna get new uniforms and maybe mm -hmm. new branding. Yep. And everything you see on the internet in terms of like pictures and stuff, obviously we're not going to get anything like those because the Mavericks are never going to look to the community to get new jerseys unless it's a contest, and then they won't pay the makers. <laughs> That's generally how, how it works, yeah. I mean, we were talking about it earlier. I am not the biggest fan of those creations of like fans, and um, but I also I'm not the biggest fan of the Mavs, uh, like, alternate jerseys and stuff but I, I, I do still prefer those i like how the maps uh, keep it simple and stuff and their colors are well, just i don't mind stuff. simplicity they just need something different they need to yeah. make things interesting again because it's kind of gotten bland especially now because those honestly the the thing that kept those jerseys alive for like the past five years was dirk if there yeah. was no dirk everyone would be like like 
protesting those jerseys right now. I guess so. Yeah, I I do. I I like. I love the Skylanders. I don't. I think the Skylanders are the prettiest jerseys in the whole the league. Skylanders jerseys opinion. were made by fans. Is that really true? Yes. Wow. Then and I, they didn't get paid for it. That's why I said that. Then I yeah I take back what I said. But I, I mean it's still like the organization picking those and. But yeah, yeah. The big problem was it could have been so much better. It was kind of poorly executed. I guess so. I hope they do something like that again. Then, like, well, ask it, fans yeah. to like design something as as. I hope they properly compensate them. Yeah, that as well. Yeah. Like you should get at least like season tickets. I think for, that's like, fair. Yeah, that's multiple not a, years. Like, let's say you do it for one year. There's not even that much money for. Season tickets, 40, 40 games, season tickets for, like, first level is, like, like a few hundred dollars, like 200 or so. Yeah, and they earn it, like, they earn it back, like, 100 times more or, or even more, you know, so, yeah. Like jersey sales, yeah. yeah. Especially with new jerseys, it'll get attention. Do you want a court rebrand as well? Because I kind of do, because Mavericks court is just kind of generic. Maybe. I, I don't know. It's weird because... Part of why I became a Mavs fan is because I honestly I really like the jerseys, the logo, and the court. And you're pretty much really like your opinion is like completely different. You you don't. Well, like- I, li- I I like the colors, but there's no there's nothing that makes it stands out. There's nothing different. There's nothing. It, it, you can make that exact court in 2K. That's my point. What's the I, point of making a court that you can make in 2K? You're a I, professional basketball team. I guess so. I guess so. Honestly, the only court I really prefer is the is the Madison Square Garden, in my opinion. I love the like, Brooklyn Nets court. That is a great one, honestly. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe that one. And I then, like the Denver I guess, Nuggets. I like the Denver Nuggets court. Mm, I don't like that one that much. Maybe the Celtics one, but I don't know. And Celtics one is meh. I don't yeah. Know. Um. Um. I also really like um. What's one? I really like the Warriors court still. Um. Yeah, yeah I, I guess like, so. I like Not some as much of the as the Mavs one. I like some of the Kings court designs. Yeah. Um, me too. Yeah. I, yeah, I really, really, I I like the honeycomb design in Charlotte too. Oh yeah, that's a great one. I think that one is better than the Mavs one. Yeah. The Hawks have some good courts too. The yeah. the Miami Heat have a pretty solid court. Like the, if you look at the NBA rankings, the Mavericks are probably in the bottom five of court design because it's just generic. It looks it's just so boring. I guess so. Like, Maybe I just like Chicago Bulls that have some. Well, you can be simple with having personality on your court. Like the the Brooklyn Nets court isn't even that complicated. It's literally the only things that are different about it are the herringbone. Um, style on the court and the subway lettering on the name on the court name which is great it looks excellent I mean the Mavs court is still one of my favorites if I'm being honest like the, is it because of nostalgia or cause it, is it because of nostalgia or is it because it objectively looks good maybe it is nostalgia but at the same time I'm a newer Mavs fan you know so well, I've still know. been around for six years and you've watched the Monte Ellis thing and you're and like anybody else, we're all attached to everything that went down. The Vince Carter game winner, not game winner, yes, game winner. Oh yeah, that's that's probably my favorite moment, by the way, the Vince Carter game winner. Like for, uh, for me yeah. personally, like my favorite pers- uh, moment ever, which is pretty sad because it's like a game winner in a f- first round series that we lost. Well, it still went to seven, so yeah, it's better than it's better than all the other ones that happened. So yeah, twenty eleven. So um. But yeah, I think like I like the Hornets one better and the Nets one and the Knicks one. But I guess maybe I'm not really being objective, like you're saying. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure because like, just here's the thing: is that you look at all the other courts in the league and you find a lot of ones that look way more interesting, just objectively. I guess so. Yeah, maybe maybe more interesting, but at the same I like time, the, they I have... like the Bucks court too. I like the Bucks court oh, a that, lot. That one is pretty good, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like the Bucks court. Um, the Pelicans court is meh, honestly. Yeah. Grizzlies court, meh. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of other teams that have, like, a unique court, because, like, the Thunder are just as boring as the Mavericks court. So, 
Spurs are pretty boring court, but that's okay. They're the Spurs. They're supposed to be boring. <laughs> Even you Spurs fans will tell you we like boring stuff because then people underestimate you, whatever. But, you know, yeah. the, the Mavericks aren't supposed to be boring. So you don't have a name like the Mavericks to be boring. You're a Maverick for crying yeah, out loud. For sure. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a change, but at the same time, I do like the logos and stuff, so it's going to be tough. But It's you know, going to be a great thing to put up in a showcase in the Hall of Fame, but it's time to move on. Yeah, for sure. And at the same time, a lot of fans are still nostalgic about like the reunion center stuff, and I they, they got over it as well, you know, and I, I'll get over it as well. So Well, I think the big difference is the Mavericks just need to bring back green because – that was such a core part of the Mavericks' identity for so long. Was the green? It is, but at the same time, I, I that's that's re- going to be really weird. But like, I basically chose the Mavs partly because I just like dark blue a lot. And well, they're not going to get rid of the dark blue. Don't stress about that. Okay. That's true, and I like green. Green is my second favorite color, probably. So it's not that bad, but. Yeah. They just they just need they just need to have the green because they don't use it anymore. <laughs> it's tragic. That's true. Yeah, having different color colors is pretty nice. I agree with that. Also, they can probably do away with like having black jerseys. I'm tired of it. It's boring. Yeah, black jerseys aren't that pretty. I agree. They're not. They're only pretty if it's the Chicago Bulls. And they look good on the Nets, but it's because black is is really their color. Well, the Nets are a little different because they have their black and white scheme is like it's a very specific point to it. It yeah. has to do with like the Brooklyn culture and stuff where like it's all like black and white camo. Right. That's yeah. been like a big staple of Brooklyn culture in the past and that's kind of like the whole point of it. Yeah. Um you want to move on to uh talk about the fact that Dirk is retiring? Well, Dirk is retired. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that he is, is retired, yeah. Yes, it's sad, but it's, yep. it had to happen. For sure, yeah. Um. So let's break down what went down in the ceremony and talk about what, like, affected you the most. Um. So the first moment, uh, they had the weird electronic show thing that I didn't really... Like, it was cool, but they did it for too long, and it was too much random BS. It didn't make any sense. Yeah. Um. Then they had the whole um, influences thing, and then they brought out Sean Kemp, Scottie Pippen, Deadless Shrimp, Larry Bird, and uh, Scottie Pippen. Yeah. That was great. Um, I wish Dirk kind of wanted MJ to be there, if like, because like he, like he was also a big fan of MJ growing up. But, like, I'm not saying, like, Dirk didn't even know any of this was coming, but saying, like, in retrospect. So that would have been great, but, like, MJ is kind of an egotistical business crazy man right now. So, you know, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting any of that, so all that was beautiful. Um, I think the funniest moment was when Sean Kemp was talking about, can I get a can I get a step closer to this fadeaway? Can I ever block this fadeaway? I will never be able to block this fadeaway. It's just that was great. Um, Larry Bird is, was amazing to have there as well. Um, Scotty and Charles both kind of just pulled the praise card, which is great because they both know Dirk better than any of the other guys. So. Because uh, they've known him ever since he was like 18 years old at that exhibition game where, you know, Dirk dropped 52. <laughs> yeah, I love that story. He, he's told it about like six times now, but I still oh, love that story. he's told it way more than six times. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's his favorite story about Dirk. Dirk is great. So. Yeah. Um, um, going through some of the other things, the fans chanting, thank you, Dirk, and MVP was the best. Was yeah. the best. Best. Yeah, for sure. So much the best. Um, they kept going for like a really long time too. That was just great. Um, then like the, the only thing I think was kind of not so great was they kind of were chanting one more year. I was like, come on, y'all, don't don't be like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of mean. Yeah, and and Dirk is the type of player to to almost like. 
out of like, like, oh, like crap out of like shame yeah to to actually do it you know because he's like i have to do it now you know and yeah i'm thankful yeah. he didn't you know that he still kept his decision well he wasn't going to change his mind after he said it it was no, too for sure point. but yeah. The whole, like, trying to come back, I think it would have just been tragic. <laughs> it would not be good for anybody involved. Yeah. As much as Dirk would still get more points and stuff, which would be great, but, you know. Yeah, for it sure. Really, it would it was just better, because with the whole injury thing, it was just time. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else really happened. Um, Mark Cuban's promises. Yep, for sure. Dirk. Um, job for life. So, statue it's the biggest the biggest most badass statue ever yeah <laughs> and the jersey retirement and hold on how on how tall how tall does you want that statue to be uh how tall is like the kobe one in la it's not that tall okay wait um i don't really I know guarantee what, like, you, i guarantee size. i guarantee you it'll be bigger than the kobe statue <laughs> all right all right I think what, what's like a really big one. I think Mark is thinking like the size of like a, a, a large building. So that's like like I think like um big Tex, you know the Texas State Fair guy. Yeah, a little. He's fifty five feet tall. Okay. The the Dallas Zoo giraffe is sixty seven feet tall. Okay, wait. So I I know a lot about feet and inches. When it, it's regarding 67 people, feet wait. is like so like hold on I'll convert that but it's <laughs> still really tall in meters I promise yeah like I, I I know a lot about feet and inches when it's regarding 20, people 20.4 meters okay that's a lot yeah <laughs> that's 67 feet but it's either I either wanted it to be taller than that or I want it to be 41 feet yeah <laughs> 41 feet, damn it. One so really tall like that's like... That, that's like that a would multiple, actually be perfect, yeah. It's like a multiple-story building. Right. Just, that's yeah, I think 12 that's and a half meters. That's like, you know, pretty tall. Yeah, that's like uh, that's like 10 times the size of a person. Yeah. No, more like 8 times, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's still like insanely tall. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Imagine a 41-foot tall Dirk 1-foot fadeaway. Yeah. Yeah, I want it though. I don't care. So let's see. Like something I really loved uh, was the fact that Charles Barkley basically like Dirk was really like humbled by it, and he was like, "I can't believe these people show up." But at the same time, Charles Barkley was like admitting that Dirk is his favorite player. You know, he and said he Dirk did... was the nicest person ever. Which yeah, is totally true. Like seriously. that's yeah, absolutely yeah, and. And Charles Barkley, like, yeah, he said, like, Dirk is my favorite player. And that he was, like, humbled at the same time, you know, you know that he he got to be there for Dirk, you know. that That's pretty that's pretty special, in my opinion, that someone like Charles Barkley has the same feeling towards Dirk, you know. Yeah. I mean, even Scottie Pippen saying, You're, you were an inspiration. You are an inspiration to me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was, that was excellent. Um, and the fact that Dirk was crying... Like, yes. even in San Antonio, that was probably my favorite moment, like, to see him so emotional about it. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was tough for to sure. go, but yeah. it, it had to be done, so. Yeah. Um, it's for the better wondering. as well, because, yeah. like, they, he was talking about how he, like, got injections and pills and stuff to keep him going, and that's not healthy. That's not good to hear at all, you know, that's really mm. worrisome. Yeah. It's he he had to go. It really, he really had to go. Yeah. Um. At the same time, Vince Carter is b- doing one more year at least. Vince Carter hasn't had the same injury problems. Yeah, for sure. And also, he's not seven feet tall. Which is weird because Vince Carter, like he he jumped way too high in his prime, but he's still he's still healthy. He still has young he had legs. Proper he had proper landing mechanics, right. and also. He didn't carry the same scoring load on a night-to-night basis or take the same bruising in the post. That is true, yeah. Because even Dirk was still having to back down all the time. For sure, yeah. Um, 
I think it's about time, unless there's something else we forgot, to move on to the NBA playoffs. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You want so, me to give my predictions first, or you're going to go first? Uh, I don't mind. Yeah, I have I have uh, my predictions. Sure. Um, so I put it into the NBA app, but generally I had – we just want to do first round. We're going to go all the way through. Right. Oh, wait. Uh, I, I just realized I only have the first round, so I've, I got to think about it in real time. Like, Well, I mean – we. You should probably do the first round and the maybe yeah the second round first and second. The second, round. yeah, okay, uh, I'll because by the time round, yeah. we get to our next podcast, we'll probably be right around the conference finals. That's true. Yeah. So, here's mine. First round, um, Warriors and five versus the Clippers. They they have they definitely can sweep them. I just don't think the Warriors are going to try hard enough to do it. So. Mm. Yeah. Um, I said Blazers and six versus the Thunder. Okay. Because I think Dame Lillard is gonna show who's boss, honestly. And also, I'm honestly Portland's just been on a tear, and Thunder has been in a wreck. So, right. <laughs> even without Nurkic, they've still been playing pretty decent. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, um, then you have Nuggets and Spurs. Uh, I think I said Nuggets in five on that one because okay. I just don't think the Spurs have anything they can do against Jokic despite all their Popovich geniusness. Hmm. But, I mean, you need legitimate talent on your roster, and DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge being your best talent is just not going to be enough. Like it's not like past years where they had like these long term players who've been together for like ten plus years and they have like so many of them and they have Kawhi Leonard on their team too. It's not like that this year. Yeah. Um and then there should be one more Western Conference matchup. Yeah, Rockets Jazz. Rockets Jazz, Rockets and Six. Because okay. Harden just the Jazz have no chance. So right. in, and I only say six games because Harden's going to probably have a, a game or two where he goes cold. Right. But g- generally, the Rockets are just a superior team. Right. So mine is a bit different because I do have the Warriors Clippers in four and the Warriors because I I don't I just don't think the Clippers are good enough. You know, even though the Warriors might not put most of their effort in, you know, I just, I just think the Clippers aren't good enough. My big thing is just the Clippers are one of the hardest trying teams with one of the most well coached and they're so well put together. They have such great chemistry. Yeah. That's the only reason. If the Clippers were more like the, uh, Orlando magic right now, I'd probably pick a sweep. Yeah. If you put it like that, then maybe the war, the Clippers could actually like win two or three games. They're not going to win two or three games because they don't have the talent. Yeah. But they have enough grit and grind in them. The Warriors are going to take a night off and they'll win a game. Right. That's why. Uh, Nuggets Spurs, I have uh, the Nuggets in six. Fair. Because I, I do think Popovich has some stuff in, in him, you know. And I think um, I, you know, I, I think I'm just, Aldrich I'm, and, and, yeah. I just, I just, I'm too much of a big fan of how Nuggets offense works. It's yeah. very hard for anybody to stop. I think so too. Yeah. So maybe maybe in five, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This is why that's why I picked five. Um, next. Trailblazers Thunder. I have the Thunder in five. I know the five. yeah. I know the Damian Lillard stuff, and but have, not having Nurkic is worrisome in my opinion. And the Thunder are on a cold streak. They are, but they're just saving up for playoffs. It seems you know they're not it, saving up for playoffs because they didn't. You don't. They were nearly ending up at the eighth seed and having to match up against the Warriors. I think they would have liked that, honestly. Yo. No, they would not have liked that. You never want to match up against the Warriors in the first round. I, yeah, I agree, but the Thunder are weird. They have like that thing with the Warriors where they just want to play them, you know? They'll lose. I'll tell I you think, that. I think They'll they lose. Would have, yeah, I think they would have as well, yeah. But then at least they would have known right away, you know? I just think the the the... Trailblazers are a better coach team, and this year they've just made changes, and they just seem different. Yeah. 
if you put it like that, then maybe maybe Thunder in it, six or seven. It really but... it really can go either way. I guess so. Yeah. It really depends on who gets hot, because yeah. and I say that like that's kind of seems obvious, but like both Paul George have been like on and on and off. Where Paul George is on, it's there's no chance you're not gonna right. win. Yeah. But if Damian Lillard decides it's Dame time and drops forty on you, you know. Yeah. It's gonna so, be a, it's gonna be the one of the best playoff series to watch in the first round. Yeah. So Rockets, yes, I have the Rockets in seven because I do think um, Clint Capella is has, has been a little injured, and I think Rudy Gobert is gonna let, be like a lot better than Capella and. I don't know. Harden is pretty bad in the playoffs usually, and Donovan Mitchell was well, pretty good last here's year. The difference. Here's difference. Let's remember how last year it went. I'm pretty sure last year the Rockets won in six. I think so, yeah. So the big thing to consider is this year the Rockets are worse. Yep, but I also mean, the Jazz. The Rockets are worse, but the Jazz, but the but Harden is better. Yeah, I guess so. But also he has to carry the load a lot more, so he's probably very tired. That's okay. He's been doing it all year and keeping it up, so I'm not... Okay. I mean, yeah. if Allen Iverson can do it, then James Harden's doing the same stuff as far as carrying, and he's doing a damn good job. Right. As much as we all hate his guts. But, um... <laughs> the Jazz, uh... The big thing is I'm not... I've My faith in Mitchell has kind of fallen off. Hmm. Yeah, me too, I guess. But I think he he will play better in the playoffs, honestly. I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. I think the Rockets are going to find a way to make his life very difficult. The only way Mitchell was able to really go up toe-to-toe with Harden is if he can actually hit threes, which you don't know. So Right, yeah. I mean, if he's hitting threes, then you know, this can go seven games. Right. You want me to move on to the East uh, Um, so You didn't say your Nuggets. Wait, you did say Nuggets Spurs. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah I did. So um, I have yeah. the Bucks in four against the Pistons. Same, because the Pistons don't have the same grid as the Clippers, mm-hmm. and also the Giannis is just Giannis. He's yeah, too intense, exactly. too great. Pistons also don't have much depth, you know. Yeah, just generally not a big fan of the Pistons. So I think this is one where we probably disagree because I have the Raptors in six. Six? Yeah. Why six? I, I think Fucevic is probably going to carry the magic again, and he's probably going to be doing but a the, good job the, of it. The Raptors have Ibaka and Gasol. Yeah, and they also have Kawhi Leonard and stuff. I know, but I also think the, the Raptors kind of str- struggle Siakam, in the playoffs, too. you know. The Raptors are a different team. <laughs> That's true. They didn't have yeah. Mark Gasol last year. They didn't true. have Kawhi Leonard last year. It's not the same. Different coach as well. I know, they just, but they're so different. This I think I think because team. they're 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 so good, they're probably uh, like like the Warriors. You know, they're gonna play probably like take a few games off. Yeah, but I don't think they're gonna take games off because I think Kawhi wants his bag, right. and people might be hesitant to give him money if he's do, pulling a load management and then not executing in the playoffs to the best of his ability, right. which is so, kind of the whole point of the load management in the first place. Right. So you have them in four or five? I have them in five. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Because mostly just because Vucevic can have one of his nights and Terrence Ross could go off for 50 for all I know. So. Right, yeah. Uh, 76ers Nets, I have the Sixers in six. Same, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. I had them in six. Mostly think, yeah. because the Sixers are having a lot of injury trouble right now. There are rumors yeah. Embiid might not be ready for game one. Exactly, yeah. And uh, D'Angelo Russell might go off a few games, you know. Yeah. Jared also, Allen. Karis LeVert. Karis LeVert, for sure. Spencer yeah. Dinwiddie. Is Karis LeVert fully healed now because he had a pretty bad injury before? Let me, let me check his numbers. Right. But I think he's close to back. In right. terms of who he was. Yeah, because I'd, I'd imagine he, he probably still struggles because he's, like, coming back and stuff, yeah. Let me check his splits for post-All-Star break. Um, The shooting has not been great this year, though. That's still been a problem for him. Mm. Okay. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't click game logs. I clicked splits. Hold right. on. Hold on just a second. Um, Splits. There we go. All right. Post-All-Star break. 
he's been shooting better from three, but his efficiency from two is just abhorrent. It's bad. Right. Yeah. Like, it's just really bad. <laughs> like, like 40% bad. Oof, yeah. But he also shot 25% from three, I mean, 28% from three before the All-Star break, so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he... He'll, I don't know how much of a contribution he'll be able to make, but I think he's going to be enough to have an impact. Right. Um, also, you have Jared Allen, of course. Yep, he's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's better than Mitchell Robinson, though. Um, Mitchell Robinson has so many blocks. He has, like, what? a lot of blocks. Like, more what? blocks than Jared in less minutes. Right. Like, way less minutes. But why that comparison? Because I'm salty, the Mavericks didn't pick Mitchell Robinson. Right, yeah. I mean, uh, if they didn't take Brunson, they, they had to take either Brunson or, or Robinson, right? The, yeah, they really, I, I was really wanting them to take Robinson. Because, I mean, they've been talking for years how they want the next Tyson. Well, guess who Mitch Robinson is? Yeah, for sure, that is true. But I think it was more that Robinson had some personality issues, and you didn't really know what you got from him, right? I mean, I didn't think the personality issues were that big of a deal. They were more problematic for Robert Williams than they were for Mitchell. Mitchell right, mostly right. just he just didn't go to college because there was a whole bunch of drama as right. at Western Kentucky that he didn't want to deal with, which is fair cuz it was a mess. Yeah, I think he made the best decision honestly. But I mean, the best I, decision would be if he had been able to go to a better school and then got picked in like the lottery cuz he would have been. Yeah, that's true as well. But I, I am really happy with Brunson, and I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly. Like, oh, I would definitely really have Mitchell Robinson me. today, tomorrow, and the next day over Brunson, and I would not think twice about it. Yeah, okay. But then who would be our point guard while we traded Dennis Smith Jr.? You can sign one. You can sign the Corey Joseph's of the world for all I care. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. I'd I, I take the Brunson f- over Mitchell Robinson, though. No, I'm not. Because we have Powell He's and Kleber. So, Powell and Kleber are not Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson is already, like, miles ahead. It's not. It's I, I agree, it's, but, like, uh, you know, I still would have wanted, like, a young point guard, you know. And get Fred Van Vliet. Like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, why pick a point guard in the early second round when you have a guy like Mitchell Robinson? Like, that's just my point. Yeah. Like, they're. The great think, backup point guards are dime a dozen. Hmm. They are. There's so many of them. Yeah. I guess you're right. But I, I like Brunson, you know, so. I like Brunson too, but I love Mitchell Robinson. <laughs> and Mitchell Robinson would literally make all the worries about defense in terms of interior. And it would literally, like, their paint would just be a no-go zone. <laughs> yeah. No I think also... There. I think also the Mavs aren't really looking for a Tyson Chandler anymore. I think they they want to they want to switch and they, they want to shoot Tyson you know. Chandler. For, well, Tyson he, Mitchell Robinson can do handle himself. He's yeah. not he's not a freaking brick, like right. Yeah, <laughs> he's super. He's uber athletic too. Right. Yeah, that's true. Um. So Celtics Pacers. I have maybe a little weird, but I have the Celtics in seven. No, oh, I picked. Um, I think I picked Pacers in seven. Wow. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Honestly, I'm saying Pacers in seven because number one, Celtics don't have smart. Two, the Celtics are a disgrace, disgraceful mess. Yeah. And three, I think the Pacers are like that Clippers team with like significantly better talent. Yeah, like, for sure. Bogdanovich is basically like. 90% of Gallinari's offensive game with, like, legitimate defensive ability. And then you have Miles Turner, who is, like, a top-five center in the league at this point, arguably. Right. If not, I, definitely. I thought, He's right. arguably the defensive player of the year. Right. I and also think Darren Collison is one of the most underrated players in the league. Darren Collison's not a good starter in this matchup, though. Yeah, that that is true against Kyrie Irving. Yeah, they, they'll, need, figure, they'll figure something out. Corey Joseph will start. I'd be willing to bet on it because... Oh, yeah, he's I forgot the, about that. Corey Joseph might be even better, yeah. Yes. Well, he's the better matchup. He can defend like, yeah, much yeah. better. Whereas Darren Collison, you're 6'9". Yeah, just not going to work. 
Isn't he 5'11 or 5'10 maybe? He's 6'9, I'm like pretty sure. But I can okay. Google it. Yeah. He looks so much shorter when he's playing. Well, that's how guards work usually. Because they're usually bending over. Right. Darren Collison. Darren Collison. Okay, here we go. Darren Collison is six foot. Okay, yeah. Anyway, uh... Hold on, we I, have I'm one kinda... more series, right? Sorry, no, that's it, that's it. That's it in the East. Uh, Box in four. Raptors in six, Sixers in six, and Celtics in seven. And I said Pacers in seven, just yeah. for the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also I think I'd pick Raptors in five. And yeah. Right. So in the second round, who matches up against who? I'm kind of confused about that now. All right, so I can look up the bracket. So um, we're just going to go West first. Sure. Is that yeah. cool? All right, so... First matchup, you have Warriors, and you picked Rockets, right? Yeah. Warriors-Rockets. Yeah. That's a damn good second-round matchup. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think the Warriors in six? Yes. Same pick. Right. Um, Trailblazer. Did you have Trailblazers or Thunder? You had Thunder. Thunder in five, yeah. So Thunder slash Trailblazers versus Nuggets. Um... Oh, that's so tough. I think the Nuggets in seven. Nuggets in seven versus the Thunder, and what about the Trailblazers if they make it? Because yeah, I and probably them. the Nuggets in six. Yeah, I'd agree with both of those. Um, actually, I think the it would be Thunder. I mean, sorry, Nuggets in six two versus the Thunder. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, because no one's like Stephen Adams can't do anything about Jokic's passing, so for sure, like, yeah. nobody can. So. At the same That's time, right. Jokic isn't isn't. No, wait. His perimeter defense is pretty decent, right? It's not great, but the Nuggets have a great scheme for hiding him, and they make it very effective. Right. Yeah. I think the and Thunder has think, to like. I don't think the Thunder have the coaching chops. Right. To yeah. beat him in that if, sort of way. If they want to beat him, they probably have to play Grant at five a lot to play small and have a lot of shooting. Well, I think they need. Grant at four because someone needs to take the punishment from Jokic, and also you need Grant in that free safety sort of role. Right. Yeah. It's tough. Yes. Also, if, if Grant gets matched up versus Jokic, it's going to be buckets all day. Yeah. You're right. It's just it's 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 like I said, it's just a tough proposition for the Thunder in general. Yeah. Um, moving on to the East, we have Bucks versus Celtics slash Pacers. Um. Yeah, so I had the Celtics, and I think the Bucks are going to sweep them. Honestly, um, I think I said for the Pacers series, I think I said Bucks in five. Right. Um, and the big reason is I just think the Pacers have that roster makeup to where they can give Giannis issues for yeah, a game. Yeah, I agree. Because if, Miles yeah. Turner is one of the most ideal centers to match up versus Giannis. Now, if Giannis suddenly decides to get in his bag and pull, like, three pull-up threes in the game, then, like, you know, it's over. Like, there's no chance. Yeah. But, you know. I think the the Pacers are a better matchup for the Bucks than yes, Celtics. Yes, that's why. I, for that's for why their I, side, yeah. Especially because so, the, the Celtics, unless they can get their stuff together, really lack that extra gear right now. Yeah. So maybe even Bucks in, in six against the Pacers, but definitely say, Bucks in four five, against the Celtics. The, I'm saying five because the Bucks are just so much more talented and they're still really well put together and they have great chemistry. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, moving on to the second half of the East round of the second round for the East, we have the 76ers and the Raptors. I think the Raptors in six. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I think I said Raptors in seven because I think yeah, that will be back. Fair. Yeah. Um. So just in case we don't get to this pot in time, let's just do the next round, and then we'll leave it at that. Yeah, sure. All right. So we have the Raptors and the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals. I think Bucks in seven. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm pretty sure I said Bucks at seven. I either said Bucks yeah. at seven or Bucks in six, because I don't know. We'll see. I just don't think anybody on the Raptors can do anything about Giannis. 
But yeah, at the same time, the Raptors are such a good team. It's really difficult. Um, Western Conference, you have Warriors the... Warriors Nuggets, right? Warriors Nuggets. I'll take the Warriors in... I think I said five. I might have said six. Um, Because the Warriors are just the worst matchup possible for the Nuggets. That is true, yeah. So Warriors in six, I, th- I think. I, yeah, I have to say five or six. Yeah. And so we'll get into, we'll see if our predictions are right. But in our predictions, we would have the Warriors and the Bucks in the finals. And being theoretical, I'll say Warriors in six. But not that it matters because we'll probably be wrong because someone I'm, else will somehow. I'm kind of leaning towards Bucks in seven, honestly. Oh, my God. Don't even. Yeah. No, don't, I, don't do I, it. You're I'm just going to be sure, depressed. But... Yeah, You're just okay. going to get depressed. You're yeah. going to because the Warriors are going to come back in the playoffs again cuz you know how it is every single year. The Warriors don't give a damn about the regular season and then they true, sweep yeah. everybody. And the Bucks have been playing way too hard. So it's going to The yeah. the Bucks also have a really tough Eastern Conference road. They're going to face like in the second round, they're going to have one of the toughest teams in the Pacers in the final yeah. in the Eastern Conference Finals. They'll have the Raptors, one of the most well-built teams in the league. Yeah, so I, I said I was leaning towards it, but yeah, I think... Whereas the Warriors have to face the Clippers, which is kind of like the Pacers of the West, but with less talent. Mm. In the second round, they're facing the Rockets, who they've had trouble with in the past, but I think this time around, the Rockets have less talent, and they're relying a whole lot on Harden, so there's a lot of variance. Right. Yeah. And then in that final series, they're gonna just they're, they might even take the rain. The main reason it could really go six is because they might take a game off. Because the Warriors, if they wanted to, they could sweep the Nuggets. Yeah, I think so. And too. in the finals, they're not messing around. They want that trophy. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of thinking, but like uh, Giannis is too, like too good, and they they're using Brook Lopez really well. But, but KD and they is also too have good. And Steph yeah. Curry is too good. Exactly, yeah. And so Clay Thompson can go off for 50 at a flash of a pan, as far as I'm yeah, concerned. They're way too stacked. They're way too stacked. So, yeah, Warriors in seven. I said Warriors in six. Yeah, that's fair. I think the only team that could take the Warriors to seven would be if you took the entire Bucks roster. And then on top of that, you added, like, Paul George. <laughs> right, yeah. That would be the team that could take the Warriors to seven. But man, I would I would love to see the Bucks win a championship. They deserve oh, it. Oh, really I want Giannis bad. to win a championship so bad. Yeah. No, yeah. But I would you be really pick. happy. Like it would but almost feel a... like it was. Nah, I mean, it wouldn't feel like the Mavs win it, but like it could could we kind of close, you know? Because I love Giannis so much. Yes, because you want Giannis to come to the Mavs. <laughs> that that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, if he's winning a championship, he's not going anywhere. But I think so, yeah. But um, the well, big thing is I'm, I'm picking who the, I think is going to win and not who I want to win. Because obviously, yeah. if I'm picking who I want to win, I want the Bucks to just beat the living shit out of the Warriors, and I don't even care. Sure. No, I was picking who I, who I thought as well, and I, I was kind of leaning towards the Bucks, but it it's, was I, I like can't. 50-50. I can't do it. It's pretty 50-50 to me. I can't do it. Yeah, no, me me too. So it's the Warriors, yeah. I mean, look at what the war. Obviously, the Cavs were significantly less talented, but still, the Warriors game plan versus LeBron so well. They made they let LeBron drop like fifty on him every game, but like nobody else was allowed to make any sort of contribution. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but all in all, the NBA playoffs actually start today. Oh, that's true. Yeah, uh, pretty early in Europe as well. Let me let me check. Yeah, they start at like six my time. I'm pretty sure, because it's gonna start with the Eastern. Uh, oh, even earlier, one thirty p.m. today we have Nets Sixers. Right. Yeah. So that's eight thirty p.m. my time, which is a pretty decent time, which is nice. And then at four o'clock you have Magic Raptors. Yep. Eleven p.m. my time, which is also seven, nice. Seven is late, but you got Clippers Warriors, and then nine thirty you have like the best matchup of the night. <laughs> I think I'm gonna Nets. I'm gonna be watching Nets Sixers because it's kind of early, and then probably also Magic Raptors because because I just want to see Vucevic play, you know. You want to see but, Vucevic get destroyed? Because he's gonna get destroyed. He probably is, but he's also gonna score at least 20 points. Oh yeah, he's gonna have a good night for himself, but no one else is. Just yeah, like, it's just gonna be bad. Um, and then but, the 
Sixers might sputter versus the Nets, so that'll be good. Yeah. The Nets are super exciting to watch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're really fun. I, I don't think I'm going to be watching Clippers Warriors and Spurs Nuggets because it's way too late and the matchup isn't fun at all. Spurs Nuggets is super fun. What are you talking about? I guess. Maybe I'll watch it tomorrow then. Yeah. Well, let's say don't watch it live. It's too late. Like, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what, a 2 a.m. game for you? No, 4.30 a.m. 4.30 a.m.? Oh, let's see what Yeah. Works. Yeah, well, anyway, that being said, I think we've done everything we could possibly do for this episode. I think so, too, yeah. So, um, why don't you go ahead and uh, outro? For sure. So, if you want to check me on Twitter, it's at Mavericks Monte, where I talk about basketball. So, nothing YouTube-related, but basketball still. Um, Max, where can they find you? Max Scouts on Twitter. And uh, also, I have pieces on com and LockDraft.com. More work is coming on there as well. I'm also on the LockDraft podcast. And my host with my co-hosts because we're all a team is on the third round picks is adam bibbs which is uh, mike bibbins on twitter and also at bibbs corner is his like basketball specific account and also he has a website bibbscorner.com where he has all his analysis and also some film articles as well he also does some netflix work for him remote um we might and then uh, my other coast is a uh, uh mass draft on twitter richard stamen obviously you know the name massdraft.com you know what it is Draft season is coming upon us, and we are very excited for it, for sure. Big board season is not too far away. Also, small player's name. That's going to be our next – small player name is going to be our next episode. But by the time this episode of this uh, Too Much Mate comes out, that might already be out. But then I've also got some European names to talk about after that. And then big board season will be like a week after – two weeks late – two weeks after that. So – be on the lookout because content is coming. Anyway, uh, that's all. I got two, 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 too much Monte. Monte Ellis, ask the fellas. Food talk trash because they jealous. Laid back from the south. Trying to hack up, I'll make you shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Yeah, Monte Ellis, take-